Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Ozma Syed. I'm an infectious diseases physician, president of South Shore Infectious Diseases in New York, USA. I'm also the chair of the COVID-19 task force, as well as the director of the Antimicrobial Stewardship Center of Excellence at Good Samaritan University Hospital. I'm delighted to join you all today. Unfortunately, I could not be there in person, uh, but I wanted to uh, share a few um, perspectives uh, from my end. And first and foremost, I'd really like to thank the organizers for having this much needed um, event and conversation and emphasis um, on global health. And thank you to the Berlin Global Health Collective for today's session. So we all know that there is a stark interconnection between antimicrobial resistance, sepsis, pandemics, and climate change. And we know that the burden of infectious diseases continues to rise. And our, unfortunately, the global population is dealing with unprecedented challenges as we speak. We know that the population is growing throughout the world, and we know that people continue to be displaced due to conflict. There's ample food and water insecurity throughout the world, and there's also lack of access to basic rights such as health care, which leads to lack of access to vaccines. And unfortunately, that leads to a rise in vaccine preventable diseases, which then ties into antimicrobial resistance, sepsis, and pandemics. Um, so we see that all of this is intertwined as well as climate change, because unfortunately, this recent pandemic will not be the last one. And due to ongoing climate change, we will continue to see worsening pandemics throughout our lifetime. We know that vaccine preventable diseases are on the rise and we have really harsh statistics and staggering numbers um, that we've seen on the rise of vaccine preventable diseases. Just from the World Health Organization and UNICEF, there were some 17 million kids who did not receive um, a single dose of a vaccine in 2020. Well, we know that this results in more antimicrobial resistance and sepsis. And, you know, what can we do about it? We have to work harder to really get the message across to reach people where they are, because we know at the end of the day, it's the most vulnerable communities um, that are going to be most impacted from this. And, and we see this over and over again, where 66 percent of these vaccine preventable diseases were in low resource countries. So I just want to share briefly with you um, my perspective as an infectious diseases physician on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic and, and what I saw that was alarming. Um, it was really a devastating time for many of us throughout the world and especially in the healthcare community with the impact that we saw with people suffering and tremendous lives lost from the despair, the disability, the death that we saw day in and day out. What I did notice, however, was that people were coming in and my patients were in fact being impacted by sepsis. And in fact, they were being affected by viral sepsis. And this was not adequately being recognized. There was not adequately being diagnosed. And as a result, this was not adequately being treated. And I really found myself helpless. And so I took this time to really invest in doing a lot of research literature and gathering all the resources to really put the time in there to work on a book called COVID-19 Viral Sepsis, which was just recently published, so that we can continue to educate the public, the masses, the community members, as well as healthcare workers, so that we can have better outcomes for people overall, both nationally and globally. We have to educate the general public as well as the healthcare industry about the warning signs of sepsis because people are far too often comfortable with recognizing bacterial infections and sepsis, but they forget that viruses can lead to sepsis as well. So as I mentioned before, it's often the most vulnerable who are most impacted. And we have to remember that we have to be a voice for all communities and for all ages. So I really want to thank you again for this time, and uh, I really look forward to working with you further in the future, and I hope you have a very wonderful afternoon and a productive session. Thank you. Goodbye.